Good morning, fellow privateers. Long time. It's been a long time since I've done one of these. I just wanted to wait for a, a down week in stocks before I spoke. And you can see here by the weekly S&P chart, we haven't had too many of those since the lows back in March. <clears throat> we had a, uh, an interesting couple day move um, Thursday, Friday. You can see here we got down to 3350-ish and then we closed up at 3420. So we had about a 70 handle rally. If you look at the daily, um, you can see more clearly. So we made the low on Friday. It was in the morning. So pretty intense selling pressure early on the open. And then we had a bit of a reversal, um, you know, into the, into the close. So the news, the, the only news really that came out over the after the close was Tesla uh, was not included in the S&P 500. Um, and uh, the stock, I believe, was down a bit after the close, maybe 5 or 6%. Let's see if it shows up here. Tesla. Uh, yeah, it's not really showing it. Anyhow, it, it, I believe it was down at like three, 380, 390 after the close. Um, so we had a stock split in both Apple and Tesla um, the last day of August. And then we had a... Um, the news that they were not included. So the stock was coming under a bit of pressure. Um, you know, the, the two day move really, and you'll, we'll look at the NASDAQ. I mean, here's S&P, um, you know, made a new all time high uh, last week on Wednesday and then came unglued. And it, the story we have been kind of talking about since early in the week was, and SoftBank was finally identified as the, as the gamma whale, as they're calling them. You know, they bought, I don't know, it's like $4 billion worth of call premium in all the large cap tech names. And they, uh, I think it was about $30 billion in notional, 20 or $30 billion in notional. Supposedly, they're up about 100% on that. Um, certainly doesn't, I don't know if they've been selling, if they started selling anything on Thursday or or Friday, but Zero Hedge put a good note out basically saying that, you know, the Bank of Japan, the GPIF, uh, I think even the Norges Bank, they're all huge holders of um, SoftBank shares via the ETFs mainly. Um, and, you know, they're pretty much too big to fail. So they, they made an interesting point, but could I think it would be if we start seeing fall through in this selling in these large cap tech names, the Fang names. Um, you know the dealers were caught short gamma because SoftBank was the buyer. Market makers have to make a price. They make a price. They jack up vol. Make another price. They get paid, and it's just this uh, vicious circle of uh, of call buying and. You know, short, getting short gamma, and, and uh, you know that's why the VIX and the VXN have been going up with stocks as stocks were making new highs. And uh, now the dealers, so they have to buy their deltas, so they have to buy the underlying stock. And now, if things turn lower, they're going to have to sell it, everything they bought, which will put further pressure on. Um, on the overall market. So we're at interesting times. Um, it sure feels like this thing could kind of implode this rally. Um, I wouldn't be at all surprised if we see more selling. I mean, if we take a look here at the weekly NASDAQ, it's a pretty ugly week. I mean, it's a, it's a bearish engulfing made a new all time high. We closed, it saved itself, got down to about 11, just over 11,000 after making a 12,000, almost 500 high in the NASDAQ 100. And then we closed kind of right on the previous week's lows. So it's an ugly looking weekly, um, you know, put things in perspective. The daily, you know, it was a big, big bounce, right? We bounced like $400 off the lows or so. Um, so volatility is, uh, 
is here, and I, we expect more. You know, get a long weekend. We got Labor Day in the U.S. tomorrow, so markets will be closed and uh, liquidity will not be great. So my guess is you know, we're going we're to see some decent moves here um, the next uh, the next few days. Um, one other thing that not too many people are ta- have been talking about is the the moves that we saw on Friday in U.S. 10s and, and 30s and the, and the yield curve, um, big yield curve steepening. Uh, you can see here it's a huge, huge update. So jobs number in the U.S., the NFP number was you know, better than expected. There's a ton of issuance uh, coming up this week out of the U.S. Um, you know, this is a big move. And this is something we need to pay pay very close attention to because this is the yield, right? So, you know, bonds selling off, yields going up. The stock market's not going to like this either. So if we can get an extension and and start taking out this high that we saw in 10s up here around, uh, I think it was 78, and then 30s, you know, they rallied up and before reversing, most of last week out to 155. Uh, we start taking out those levels and uh, let's let's move back here just to put things in a bigger. That, you know, we've been calling for a retest of these June highs and yields. So that's 175 in the 30s and I think it's 95-ish, 95, 96 in tens. So watch this space. I think the bonds are not acting as a hedge. You know, we. They sold equities and they sold bonds. Um, that could be very painful. Um, gold hung in there um, on Friday. Uh, kind of a doji type day. Silver closed up on the day. A little bit of a reversal off the lows. Um, as far as currencies go, here, and here's the VIX. So the VIX actually sold off on, um, on Friday after making a new high for this whole move up to 38, 38 and then had a big reversal lower. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that stocks are going to rally. Um, but, but in that, in that little, you know, kind of inch, late day rally in equities off the lows, the VIX came under some pretty decent selling pressure VXN as well, the, the NASDAQ VIX. Um, you know, so a lot of a lot of the action was really in equities and bonds the, the last couple of days. Um, currencies, I mean, we'll go to the euro. We need to look at this. So we finally got to our target of 120. It was up there for about five seconds. It reversed lower that day and then continued to sell off. So um, as far as the euro goes, and we're still bullish and buying on dips, you know, 117.50 kind of kind of looks like these lows from August and, you know, somewhere this 117, 11750 level looks like support and we'd be looking to buy that. Um, cable, similar. I mean, the dollar rallied across the board the last few days. Uh, cable kind of saved itself on Friday with a doji type day. Um, you know, Euro got close to the doji. Dollar ends kind of a sideshow. Um, Ozzy and Kiwi got hit pretty hard, but then reversed up. Um, so we still like selling dollar rallies. And uh, we think most of the action is going to be centered around what the bond market and the equity market, uh, what their price action looks like this week. Uh, we got a Fed meeting in, in a week or so. we got the ECB coming up. Um, you know, we do have some data coming out this week, but uh, I expect some pretty illiquid, slippery moves in the next uh, in the next few days. And we'll see, you know, we're, we're playing the equities from the short side. I didn't like that late day rally, but we're going to stick with it for now. Um, all right. I think you'll be hearing from us on the European Open. Uh, it's going to be back in front of the screens. I took a little break and, uh, you know, now laser focused and uh, between now and your end. Good luck and we'll speak to you uh, next week.
All the best. Cheers.